Let me show you how easy it is to create Lottie animations and export them right away without the need for plugins or any third-party apps. So let's get started. Click here on the new project button. You can start a project from blank by setting a size for the canvas, or you can upload an existing file from your computer, which is what I'm going to do. I have this Lottie file ready to begin with, so I'll just open it. Now let's have a look at the animation. Hit the play button to preview it. That looks nice a smooth and clean animation. Here in the left panel, you can see the list of all the elements. They are well organized into groups which are named accordingly. To open a group, simply click on it and access its elements inside. You can create new groups or organize existing ones at any time. Now let me show you how easy it is to work with the elements on the canvas. Let's start with something simple. Let's change the colors for this toaster. Click on it to select it. The first click will select the toaster group, but I need to get to the path element to change its fill color. The toaster group has another group inside, which has the path I want to select. With each click, I'll go one level deeper into the group until I get to the last one. Now with the path selected, go to the properties panel here in the right sidebar and click on the fill color. Then freely pick a new color for the element you have selected. I will go with this light blue. Next, I want to select the side of the toaster. This time, I'll use the Node tool, which I'll select from the toolbar here. With the Node tool, I'm able to select the path element directly without having to click multiple times through the group levels. You can also switch to the Node tool by pressing A on your keyboard. Now back to the Fill properties where I'll use the Color Picker to get the same blue from the other path. Then I will make it slightly darker. And the last one, the base of the toaster. I'll pick this second blue color and make it even darker. And let's not forget about those reflection lines. I'll make them white. Now let's continue with the most exciting part, the animation. All the keyframes of the animation are present here in the timeline. For a smoother transition, hold down the shift key on your keyboard while scrubbing the playhead. To extend the timeline's duration, grab this marker and drag it. I will drop it at four and a half seconds. What I want to do now is to extend the duration between these two keyframes. This is the moment in the animation when the bread slice is inside the toaster, and I want it to stay there a little longer. So I'm selecting all the keyframes after that time segment and move them all together to the right. Now I have more time before the bread slice will pop out. I need this time to be longer for a loading animation I want to create from scratch. First, I need to draw it. I'll choose the ellipse from the shapes drop-down and draw a circle in the middle of the toaster's front shape. To create a perfect circle starting from its center, hold down Shift and Option or Alt on your keyboard while dragging the cursor to draw the circle. Then go to the Fill and Stroke properties, change the fill color to white, then click on those arrows to swap the color from fill to stroke. I will also increase the stroke width to 8 pixels using the arrow up key on my keyboard. Inside the circle, I want to draw a check mark. For that, I'll pick the pen tool. To start drawing, click to add the first node, then the second one and the third one. Then press V to switch back to the transform tool. And of course, I need to make it the same style as the circle. I'll pick the white color from the canvas and set its stroke width to 8 pixels. You can get back any time to make more adjustments on the path using the node tool and adjust it until you get the result you're looking for. Great, now I'll animate the circle and have its stroke offset fill in along the path to make it look like a loader. I'll start this animation from the point the bread slice dropped inside the toaster. That will be the second position keyframe of the bread or the toaster's handle, which has the same timing. To place the playhead precisely at that point, double-click the keyframe. There. Next, select the circle and open the animator's list by clicking on the animate button, here. In this list, you can see all the animations you can create for the element you have selected. I will choose Stroke Offset. The first keyframe will automatically be added at the playhead's position to mark the beginning of my animation. Next, I'll drag the playhead right about where the bread is going to pop back out. Actually, I'll have it one millisecond before that, at 1.9 seconds. In the right sidebar, I'm going to change the stroke properties. This value here is the length of the stroke, and I need to copy it for both offset and dashes. The second keyframe appears in the timeline once I added the new values to the stroke properties. Let's see how the animation looks. 
I want the stroke animation to start from the top, so I'll simply rotate the circle 90 degrees to the left, while also holding down the shift key to have it snap to the right angle. Also, it seems that by mistake I set the offset for the second keyframe instead of setting it for the first one, resulting in the stroke animation going in reverse. This is a common mistake that has a very easy fix. Just select the stroke offset animation segment, right click, and choose reverse keyframes from the menu. Now the stroke offset animation goes the right way, filling in along the circle's path. Now I'll animate the stroke offset for the check mark, which will start at the moment the circle completes its animation. I'll choose stroke offset from the animators list, and this time I'll set the length value for dashes and offset at the first keyframe. Then I'll drag the playhead two milliseconds and set the offset back to zero. Good, now let's hit play and view the animation. Perfect. Now, I want to animate the reflections on the toaster. Hold down shift and click to select both of them. You can see that the paths are grouped separately in group three and group four. To ease your workflow, select both groups from the elements list. Right click and group, or use control or command G on your keyboard. Double click on the new group's name to rename it. I'll name it reflection. I want the reflection to animate only on the front of the toaster. That means I need to create a clipping mask with the exact same shape as this path. To keep things organized, I'll first rename it to something more specific, toaster front. Next, I'll create a copy of it. Right click, copy and paste options, and duplicate. Or you can also use Control or Command D on your keyboard. I'll give this one a name as well, toaster mask. Now I need the toaster mask above the reflection group. For that, I'll just drag it to the left above those dashed guides, then move it up and place it between group two and reflection group. Now hold down shift and click the reflection group to add it to the selection. Then right click and create mask. This will create a mask group, which will contain the element used as a mask. And of course, right below is the masked element, the reflection group. Notice that the mask group has two types, luminance, and alpha. I will choose alpha to remove any opacity given by the color of the mask element and keep only the clipping effect. Now that I have the mask all set, let's go to the reflection group and animate it. Let's first play the animation from the beginning and see at what second the reflection group should start animating. Let's try it from here at second two, right about when the bread is ready to jump out of the toaster. Go to the animators list and pick position. At this keyframe, I want the reflection to be out of the mask's view, so I'll drag it to the left and completely hide it. Then move the playhead at the fourth second and drag the reflection to the right, all the way across the mask until it goes out of the view again. Now let's play it again from the beginning. Let's also zoom it out a little. It looks pretty good. And it wasn't difficult to achieve, right? Now, just to add some final touches, I'll select the first keyframe from the reflection animation and choose an easing effect for it. Open the easing panel by clicking this button here. And let's choose an easing. Of course, you can also create a custom easing by editing the curve manually. But this time, I'll only pick a preset. Let's go with Ease in Cubic. The reflections transition across the front of the toaster isn't linear anymore, which makes the animation look better. Now, in order to have a seamless looping effect, I have to make the loader vanish at the end of the animation. I'll select both the check mark and the circle and create a group, which I'll name Loader. Then with the loader group selected, I'll move the playhead at 3.5 seconds and add the opacity animator. And right before the ending at 4.3 seconds, I'll set the opacity to zero. I think adding a scale animation will make it even better. So I'll add scale as well. And right at the point where it gets to 0% opacity, I'll also set the scale to zero for both X and Y axis. Also, I'll make the opacity animation shorter. Actually, I want the loader to disappear even faster, so I'll reduce the transition some more for both opacity and scale. 
That's it. Now all that's left is to export it. Click on the export button and choose Lottie. From the Lottie export panel, you can choose settings such as frames per second. For this animation, I'll go with 100 frames per second. I'll leave the speed as it is at 100% and you can also choose to export the file optimized or not. And finally, just click on the export button to download your Lottie animation.